before your meeting in the cemetery. I don't, I don't have, have to tell, tell you, you anything. 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 All right. So, all right, mics are hot, phones on um, silent or airplane mode, please. In five, four. Hey everybody, Eric here with Black and Creative Partners, and uh, this is uh, Biz Talk, the show. Um, I am here with Jason, what's your last name? Reef. Reef. I am here with Jason Reef, and we are at One Willow. Jason was amazing in letting us come here today and to shoot all our pilot episode guests um, or pilot episodes. Uh, I will give you the rundown on what Biz Talk is a little later, but we got to re respect my man's time here because he's got business to take care of, and that's what we're here about today. Uh, Biz Talk is all about um, businesses and uh, what they do and how they overcome problems and the inspirations they might have. Um, it's from the hip. None of this is scripted. I don't know what I'm going to say next. And Jason has no idea what I'm going to ask him. So Jason, thank you for having us. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. Okay. So um, I know you are the manager for One Willow here. I right? am. Yes. Okay. So real quick before I jump into a question, give me a, a, a brief on um, One Willow, a little bit about it. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we got started in May of 2019. We opened up that season heading right into the summer. Um, so we opened up heading right into our busiest time of the year. Um, the business itself was an uh, outgrowth of really the need for a restaurant right around this area. There was always a restaurant on this property here um, that we are currently on, which was the original Oyster, which was the longest standing restaurant that was here, which most people remember from years back. Uh, Sandy obviously um, destroyed a good portion of the waterfront here in Highlands, and there's a lot of local business operators who had to recover or ch attempt to recover after that. So um, this property was revitalized and it was redeveloped and uh, provided the opportunity for myself and my partner Luke Bollerman to come in here and, and uh, open something up. And so a seafood restaurant right here on the bay in Highlands just seemed natural. So. Um when you uh, when you came in, uh, what was the excitement about you guys open? How did were, were people coming to you, uh, you know, seeing what was going on? What what's up here? What's happening? Well, sure. So the uh, the other con conjuncting factor to uh, this property that we have here is the marina. So there's always been a bit of a buzz uh, to the area when we were um, when they were redeveloping the marina. So there was patrons around for that. Uh, they were building this bi uh, building here that we now occupy, and um, there was you know there wasn't really we weren't really sure exactly which direction we were going to go with the cuisine. Um, there was another operator who did come in here for a short period of time uh, and operate and unfortunately they didn't last uh, quite as long as uh, they would have hoped but um, that once again provided the opportunity for us to come in here and try something out and yeah there was a bit of buzz uh, certainly around the local community here in Highlands. It's a very closely knit community which we're extremely happy to be part of uh, and so yeah everyone's uh, pretty closely knit and they always you know keep their finger on the pulse of what the new developments are here in town and we were happy to be one of those talking points. Awesome and that actually I, I appreciate what you, you you brought up some ideas for some questions I, I do want to ask you. Um, question number one was I was listening in, in that, that first uh, when, when you explained it to us uh, the company and uh, the business and you said you had a partner and you developed this so now are you an owner as well here or I'm an operating partner here. You're an I'm operating little, partner. Yes, okay. Cool. And but you're the managing Yeah, I'm I'm the managing partner. So I'm the here I'm the one here boots on the ground. Myself and uh, our executive chef Nick Liberto who also uh, functions very much so just alongside of myself as the leaders of this business here. Um, you know, we're the ones here uh, boots on the ground as I said day to day making sure that we're uh, providing the quality product that the community that uh, all of our guests expect and you know wrangling all the troops together, that's it. Okay, and that leads me into my next question, because um, you say this is a very tight-knit community. For sure. And um, so, when you're talking to your guests, when your guests come, is this sort of that Cheers vibe? You know everybody that's walking in here. Well, it, that's an interesting question, because there is a there is a dichotomy to the nature of uh, our business in the way of the guests that we receive, right? We are a seasonal business. Uh, we're right here on the bay uh, in Highlands, so it lends itself to being more of a summertime, uh, destination. 
Uh, that being said, we are very, very grateful and extremely lucky to have a lot of year-round patrons, uh, locals who live here in Highlands and all the surrounding areas uh, who will come and support us. But we get our fair share of first-time guests in our summer seasons, but they're always kind of um, adorned around our regulars, if that makes sense. And then once this season comes upon us now, we're here, we're almost into mid-October, which is crazy. The years fly by so quickly. But uh, yeah, now in our fall and winter season, we are, you know, we're more familiar with a lot of the faces that we see and extremely grateful for that, really. Cool, that's awesome. And um, from one entrepreneur to the next, I know the struggles and I know everything that yeah. you deal with. Um, and everybody that's you know behind the camera right now, they're all entrepreneurs as well. So, yeah. so you know, it's, it's we all know the struggles, but there's a lot of new entrepreneurs out there. Sure, there's a lot of new people starting with new ideas um, or trying. There's people who are struggling, um, or maybe they're not struggling, but they're not sure how to level up. Yeah, um, and and, that, and that's why uh, I love meeting. We love meeting people like you because you've you've been in the dirt already, and technically you're still in the dirt. I mean, you know, for sure. No, I don't. New. I don't want to get out of it. Right? You know, no. That's this is where the fun's had, and this is where you grow and you learn. So yeah, for sure. So um, you talk about the seasonal aspect of this, and there are a lot. It doesn't not just restaurants, but there's a, you know, obviously food service business, but there's retailers. Um, there's people who make their living in the summer in art, muralists, and things like that. There are all kinds of seasonal businesses out there. So let's talk real quick something. Uh, how do you sort of navigate what happens next when you get that drop off, right? You have this drop off in customers, which is, means a drop off in dollars. Yeah. So how do you, you guys sort of navigate? I know you're talking from the restaurant point of view, but I think there's definitely going to be some pointers in there. For sure, without a doubt. I mean, I'll try and approach it more broadly. Um, I will say this, that when we began the business, uh, we didn't know necessarily what to expect. I, I think when you're a young entrepreneur, when you're starting something up from scratch, you have the highest of hopes and ambitions, and, and that's really valuable. What I mean by that specifically with related to what we've dealt with is that we'd hope to be a year-round business and sustain that level of, um, you know, of, of base revenue that we were going to be able to carry us through and then allow us to build upon this business and grow even further. And so what we've um, had to do was be a little bit creative. Um, we, we had to first we had to learn what was there, what type of meat was on the bone, and learn how to approach it in that manner. And so the scalability of our specific business, uh, being that we are seasonal in nature, uh, has provided, I wouldn't say it's so many obstacles, it's really just a matter of understanding who we are, finding your identity, um, try and be as realistic with yourself about what you would like to achieve um, and where you're able to make those strides. So to speak more broadly to other you know, young entrepreneurs or uh, people who are looking to get into business, I would say it's really a matter of trying to identify who you are, uh, identify what you're trying to achieve, and then the most important element, I'll say specifically for us, which I do believe rings true to others as well, is try and surround yourself with really great people. It's, that's, that's kind of the, um, that's the variable and the one thing that I can't get away from. And when I'm, when I'm, when I think back on what this journey has been like here in the past four years at One Willow, uh, it always comes back to me for the people. Not just my guests, which I'm, you know, I'm extremely grateful for. It's really the people who I get to, you know, go at this with every day. It's the, the faces of people who I get to hire who have never had any experience in this industry, who are now leaders with me. Uh, and identifying that team. And if you can surround yourself with some really good people, identify your goal, approach it in a very deliberate manner, be realistic with yourself, then success should be had. So, that's great advice. That's great advice. And yeah, I think the realistic with yourself is uh, is a big one, especially like my business partner over there, Mark. He knows me. I'm always coming up with some harebrained schemes. <laughs> you know, we started this. You're going to be our pilot episode, by the way, our, our first episode. Excellent, excellent. Um, and this was just because we were running around doing advertising for our events. Sure. And then I got I posted online because I had all this extra footage for like 30 seconds on social media, right? I have like an hour worth of footage. Yeah. And people came back and said, how can I be on your show? And I was like, what show? You know, and so now we have a show. Yeah, and, you know, so great. it's like you, you have to be innovative. You have to be crazy. You have to be creative. I think you definitely have to be a bit crazy. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, you got to be willing to take some risks. Yeah. Um, and, and it's hard for me to escape the lens. Uh, of this industry in which I'll answer a lot of these questions, but especially in our industry, um, the, the food service industry, you always have to be looking for ways and means to um, 
to provide something new, uh, to keep things fresh. Uh, there's there's always a great benefit to you know staying true to whence you came, uh, to the core of what you want to do. But you got to get creative. You have to try new things. And in our industry, whether it's you know trying to extend yourself into catering or a food truck, or if you're looking to gain some other exposure in any other facet of this industry, it's always valuable. Uh, getting your name out there, keeping your staff working, keeping your mind jogged. There's no bad ideas. There's no such thing as a bad idea. There really is not. I firmly believe that. And uh, as long as you're trying, as long as you're out there working and trying new things, meeting new people, networking. I mean, there's. It's always going to lead you to a good place. So yeah, that would be my piece on it. So let me just cut, cut. Can you go see me? Because I know that people might start coming and they might not think to walk around the side. Thank you. And can you just make sure that red light is still blinking on the top of the monitor there? Don't be talking about me. <laughs> Should be a little red dot. Okay. Well, is it on though? Yeah, yeah that's all I need to know. <laughs> all right. Perfect. Five, I'm not done with you. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. I can talk all day, please. Five, four, three. So, um, with that, uh, you know, again, I'm, we're going to try not to, to not edit as much out of this as possible because um, sure. our episodes are not about, like, we don't have... That's the beauty. I'm a bit of a control freak in a lot of respect, right? And I think you have to have some control over the things you do as a business owner. You have to be on top of those things. And, um, you know, we don't, we're not going to have to answer to a five-minute... You know, if this is a 20-minute episode or if this is... We can do as much as we want. Sure. Um, but, you know, with that, too, comes finding that happy medium, right? Like, you talk about your customer... Uh, you talk about being creative, um, and uh, I mean, what does that look like? Because I, again, I go back. You're you're, you're in the restaurant business. Uh, you are in a seasonal business, and you are in fact um, constantly having to change, like you said, to keep things fresh, right? Sure. And uh, where does that? Wh where do you find like? How, how constant, like how much work is it to do it? I guess that's really what I'm trying to, because I know my level of work, like what I have to put into it. Sometimes it's easy as hell. Yeah. And sometimes it's hard as shit. For sure. You know? I think it may, it may depend on a, a multitude of different facets. Uh, for me, I'll say the way in which we alter and change is commonly seen on a menu, right? We're in the food service industry. We make no mistake about it, and we, you know, we understand fully that when guests are coming to join us, they're generally coming to enjoy our food. Uh, so, I am very, very lucky to work with an extremely talented uh, chef, and Chef Nick Liberto, who keeps things fresh. Uh, he's always reading. He's always looking for some uh, new recipe that he's creating on his own or he's tweaking with. Uh, there's things that he works on for months, if not years, at a time, and takes his time to fully uh, develop them. And it comes in the the interest of yes, keeping things fresh for our guests. Uh, we want to make sure that we're providing new dishes, um, some new twists on old favorites, or maybe something completely new and creative. But uh, we always we do it for ourselves as well. Uh, we do it because that's the nature of the process in which we want to live in. Uh, that's the reason why we're in this industry. We want to keep things fresh. We want to keep on pushing the bar somehow, some way. And um, you know, other ways of adjusting our approach come in the form of, you know, this tying into that seasonal nature. Here in our fall winter season, we institute a, a couple of uh, promotional nights. So we're doing a raw bar night this when, uh, on Wednesdays in the fall and the winter here at One Willow. We're we're doing dollar oysters uh, and we're doing 50 cent clams. It's something we haven't done in the past, um, but it's something that we believe is kind of, it's been something that's been called upon for us you know, by their guests and they say they want to see a, a, a raw bar promotional night, so we're doing that. We, we're a seafood restaurant and we try and stay as in touch with our roots as possible, but on Thursdays in the fall and winter season, we do an outstanding burger night. So then that really, you know, injects that bit of creativity into Chef Nick where we're coming up with all different types of burgers. I mean, we did a cowboy burger uh, with fresh onion rings, some house-made barbecue sauce. Uh, he does a, a, a Korean-style <laughs> kimchi burger. Uh, tonight we're doing, uh, we're collaborating with uh, another one of uh, another amazing small business down in Neptune uh, called Palmer's Quality Meats. Uh, their owner, Doug, there, the butcher, and uh, that team there, they do an amazing job. And Nick and I just happened to support them personally. So we decided we're going to collaborate with them this evening, uh, this Thursday on a burger night. We're going to do a Palmer's Smash Burger. So that also, you know, opens up the opportunity for us to work with other small businesses. Right. So there's, there's a lot of different ways uh, for us to remain creative. Um, how pressing is it upon us to do so? 
only in so far as we allow it to be or in so far as we want it to be. Um, you know, so on one end of it, we want to be creative because that's what keeps things fresh for us. On the other end, uh, yes, guests will ask for new dishes because they do come and support us as much as they do. There's only so many times you can have one of our entrees. Uh, but on the other side, there's also a lot of guests who are like, hey, keep the favorites, you know? Yeah. Keep on playing the hits, yeah. you know? We don't, we don't come to hear the, the C-list tracks. You know, we want the good stuff. So, you know, there's, there's a bit of a mix of all of it. Okay, that's awesome. And I mean, again, you know, I, I, you have to be creative yeah. right, in some way. So, yes. um, you know, I think uh, I'd like to sort of jump in. You just talked about some collaboration, and I think this is a really good point for you. You know, if you can infuse some advice to other business owners, small businesses. You said you're working with a, a business. What was the name of the business? It's called Palmer's Quality Meats down in Neptune. Neptune. Okay, yes. so. And uh, you, you've developed some type of, uh, so how does that work? You're bringing their product in. Sure. You're promoting them and letting people know where the food comes from. So Absolutely. talk to us a little bit about that collaboration and why new businesses should be collaborating with other businesses. Without a doubt. I mean, there's there's so many benefits to it. Um, I'd say I'll speak specifically to uh, the food service industry. There's so much, I feel like now more than there has there was in previous years, there's a lot of collaboration going on. And I think a lot of that has to do with the injection of young um, talent into our industry. There's a lot of young business operators and owners, which I think is an amazing thing thing. Uh, I really do. And I think that the nature of collaboration in the form of combining the efforts of maybe, you know, for example, we serve Benchmark Bread. They're, they're another local bakery. Um, and so to us, they make phenomenal products. Why would I go and buy something that comes from out of state? Or why would I go and buy something that's, uh, you know, maybe not as niche or maybe not as localized uh, and hasn't had as much of a personal touch on it as something like that? So we, we utilize their bread for a lot of our sandwiches, for our day-to-day -day service. Um, collaboration in general is beneficial in my industry because of the reach, right? It, you automatically, you can you know, multiply your reach into other audiences. Right. Other people who haven't seen you aren't exposed to your product. Um, I still, every year, um, commonly, I have people who come into One Willow here, and we've had five very successful seasons, uh, and I still get people who come in and say, we didn't even know you were here. And oh, wow. a lot of people would look at that, let's say operationally speaking, and they might say, wow, how is that possible? Like, you know, we've, in, we've injected some attention into marketing. We've, uh, we've done as much as we can to get our name out there. I look at that as an immense positive. That just, that just means that there's still so much meat left on the bone, as I mentioned before. There's, there's people out there who haven't had the opportunity to come and spend time with us who haven't had the opportunity to come and share a space with us and that just gives us hope for another experience one day uh, the collaboration it, it really highlights that it, it, it allows you to uh, dip your toes into somebody else's pond that they've created for themselves and that's a great thing that's what we should all be doing and yeah. there's a lot of that there's a lot of businesses that I'm even thinking about right now off the top of my head who do a great job of highlighting other businesses and I think that that's a really admirable thing and it's beneficial for everyone all around so with that said, what we're going to do is probably set up a live biz talk session here at One Willow at some point because I'm putting them on the spot. Yeah, let's do right? it. Let's and do we'll, it. We'll, we'll, we'll pack the house with a bunch of hungry entrepreneurs. <laughs> um, so let's plan for that, Jason. I would love that. And uh, we got our next guest. Come here real quick. Just say hi and jump in on um, Jason's segment here just so that we could uh, do a quick plug. Um, don't leave, Jason. How are you? Good. How are you? Jason, nice to meet you. Hi, Jason. Introduce yourself, Jason. Hi. Hi. Jason, um, yes. And then he runs One Willow and? I do. Lauren Borowski. So I own, with my husband, Matt Borowski, Child's Play Challenge Courses. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Yeah, well, welcome. Thank you. Well, thank she's you. our thank next guest. So, you know, I'm not going to get, I'm obviously going to cut the camera and get everything <laughs> set up. But thank you for coming. <laughs> and just, we're not, you know, we're just, this is not like a run of the mill ass show. So <laughs> I don't want it to be. So, I mean, you know, we want to make sure that everybody gets to meet everybody because the whole thing is like connect the businesses, right? Of course. Teach each other stuff. But Jason, thank you. Thank you so I much. I appreciate us, it very much. And um, we will thank definitely you. talk further. Absolutely. Thank I you. look forward to it. You'll be next. Right. We'll reset. All right. Perfect. This How are you? Yeah, good. So thank you. I am one of the partners oh, here. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks I for coming. My friend who lives in Hazel, I said I was coming and she's like, oh, one.